All right, looking a little bit more closely at this relationship between income and um, consumption spending. Remember disposable income? We called it spendable income. But what else can we do with our disposable income? If you think about it, there are really only two things we can do with our income. We can spend it or save it. What we spend becomes consumption spending. So we should be interested in what the relationship is between changes in income and how that changes our spending and savings habits. And that's one of the primary things that Keynes was looking at in his work in the aggregate expenditures model. Now, as I mentioned, disposable income is the most important determinant for consumption. So the relationship between disposable income and consumption has been studied for some time. And John Maynard Keynes studied that relationship during the Great Depression. If we plot consumption and income together, that relationship becomes apparent pretty quickly, right? That's what we're looking at here in panel B. Um, you don't have to look at it very hard to see that that's almost a straight line. In fact, we've drawn a line through those points there in panel B. And so Keynes developed what is known as the consumption function, which is basically the equation for the line there that you see. The equation is C equals A plus BY, where C is consumption and Y is disposable income, B is the slope of the line, which Keynes defined as the marginal propensity to consume, or the MPC. So again, hopefully you have had some math recently enough, or can bring that up out of the deep, dark recesses of your brain to remember that basic relationship for a line and understand what we're looking at here. Now, remember back at the beginning of the course, we learned about marginal benefits and costs, and we said that marginal was like saying additional. That's the same type of concept that we're looking at when we talk about the MPC. What we're getting at with this measure is how much consumption will change if your income goes up or goes down. Let me give you an example. If you're currently making $100,000 and you get a $25,000 raise, your new salary is now $125,000. When you were making 100000 you were spending 90000 of it. Now that you're making more money, you feel like you can spend more too, and so your total consumption spending goes up to 100000 Now we have what we need to calculate the MPC. The change in consumption is going to be 10000 Originally you were consuming 90000 now you're consuming 100000 The difference between the two is 10000 The change in income is 25000 your original salary was 100000 now you're making 125000 The difference is 25000 So the MPC becomes 10000 the change in consumption, divided by 25000 which is the change in income, which equals 0.4. What this is telling us is that for every additional dollar you get, you're going to spend an additional 40 cents. Okay? So now going back to the consumption function. We can see that the consumption function becomes C equals A plus MPC times Y, where A is a certain amount of autonomous consumption that will occur regardless of the level of disposable income. So there, we are acknowledging the fact that there is some spending that is not directly related to income. The MPC times Y term is what we call induced consumption. This is the level of consumption that's going to occur based on the level of disposable income. Now, going back to the idea that there are only two things we can do with our income, spend it or save it. So let's look at the savings side. Remembering that the MPC is equal to the change in consumption divided by the change in income, we can also compute the marginal propensity to save. So now the marginal propensity to save is going to be the change in savings divided by the change in income. Okay, let's go back to our example. Um, we our example had an original salary of 100000 a new salary of 125000 so our change in income was 25000 We know what happened to consumption. Originally, we were spending 90000 Now we're spending 100000 What about savings? How do we know what happens to savings? Well, we said that we can only spend or save our income. So if our original income was 100000 and we were spending 90000 then our savings must have been... 10,000. If our new income is 125,000 and our consumption is now 100,000, our savings must be 25,000, right? So the change in savings now, we've gone from savings of 10,000 
to savings of 25,000, so the change in our savings is 15,000. So the MPS becomes 15,000 divided by 25,000, the change in income doesn't change, and the MPS becomes 0.6. What that's telling us is that for every additional dollar we make, we're going to save 60 cents. Now here's the cool thing. So we've got this relationship, the MPC plus the MPS equals 1. It always equals 1. And if you think about it, that should make sense. There are two pieces of a whole, so um, they, sh they should add up to 1. So we've always got that relationship. Once we calculated the MPC as 0.4, we didn't have to do any of that other math. All we had to say was 1 minus 0.4 equals 0.6, and there we had the MPC. Okay, so um, keep that relationship in mind, it becomes very handy. The MPC plus the MPS equals 1, which means that 1 minus the MPC is equal to the MPS, and 1 minus the MPS equals the MPC. Like I said, it's a nifty little trick there. Um, keep it in mind as we're going through the rest of this material. So what can we conclude from all this? Uh, first, we should be able to clearly see that households consume a large portion of their disposable income. If you think back to the graph for a moment, um, there wasn't much difference between disposable income and spending, was there? Secondly, we can also see that both consumption and savings are related to the level of income. So what we're going to be doing as we go through is taking a closer look at that relationship. And I want to show you one more example, um, hopefully it helps solidify this a little bit. So here we've got some numbers for disposable income, consumption, and savings, and then we're calculating the MPC and the MPS. So I just want to make sure that this is clear. Um, originally our disposable income is zero, but we're spending 500. So our savings has to be a negative 500. We have to be getting that number, that amount from somewhere. Then when our disposable income goes up to 1,000, now our consumption spending goes up to 1,250. It's still higher than our disposable income, so our savings has to be negative still. Okay. Then our disposable income goes up to 2,000. Consumption goes to 2,000, so now we're even. We don't have anything left over for savings. Where our disposable income goes up to 3,000, our consumption is now 2750. That leaves us with 250 dollars in savings. And then when our disposable income goes up to 4,000, our consumption goes up to 3,500, which leaves us 500 dollars in savings. Hopefully you understand that relationship again. That's consumption and savings are the two things that we can do with our disposable income. So together they have to add up to that number. Now let's look at the MPC and the MPS. Um, let's look just, for example, at um, the rows with disposable income of 2,000 and 3,000. We know that to calculate our MPC, we need to know the change in consumption divided by the change in disposable income. Well, our change in disposable income is easy. It's 1,000, right? We went from 2,000 to 3,000. What's our change in consumption? Our consumption went from 2,000 to 2,750. So what's the difference there? The difference is 750. So our MPC, our marginal propensity to consume, becomes 750 divided by 1,000, which is 0.75. Now let's look at the MPS for those two rows. Again, the MPS is the change in savings divided by the change in disposable income. So if we look at those two rows, our change in disposable income is still 1,000. We're going from 2,000 to 3,000. Our savings goes from 0 to 250. So our change in savings is 250. 250 divided by 1,000 is 0.25. Additionally, we could have easily gotten that by saying 1 minus the MPC, 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25. So when you're calculating the MPC or the MPS, um, remember you've got, because it's marginal, you've got to calculate the difference between those two.